Oh, hey, it's Mr. Anderson, and I was just playing a little bit of Angry Birds. Sorry about that. Um, but I think Angry Birds has lessons that they can teach us. It's an addictive game, and schools are not so addictive. And so there are a few things we could learn from video games threefold that I talked about in my blog. Number one, I think school should be fun. Number two, when you play Angry Birds, if you ever fail, that's okay. You just hit reload and then you try it again. Schools aren't designed that way. And then the last thing is that school should be leveled. In other words, think how boring it would be to take a class called Angry Birds where you had to work through specific levels every day. Once you set up a system like that, half of the people in the class would be bored and half of the people would be confused. And so each of the students should be able to move at their own rate. And so if you've been reading my blog at all, you've heard that I've designed my class around a video game. And this is the inside of the video game. This is in my Moodle server. The name of the game is called Biohazard 5. The premise of the game is that uh, the main character, Babe Hithertwit, which is a anagram, has been sent back in time to find the greatest biology minds of today to solve a biological threat in the future. That's the premise behind the game, but it's really taking the best elements of video games and then applying them into the classroom. And so this is it, Biohazard 5. I'll try not to show you any of the private information of the kids. And so the first thing you'll see when you get on is a leaderboard. And so if I were to click on that, this would bring up a leaderboard. I did this in Google Docs. It shows the names of the kids who are the top 25 in the class shows what level they are, their rank, how many experience points they have, and there's lots of columns that I've hidden, but these are the last few things that we did on, on level or unit three. It also has a little graph where it shows all the students in the class and how many experience points they have. So that even though they may not be in the top 25, they can move back and forth and see where they rank in the class. And then there's a class wars page where the three periods can be compared and average uh, the average experience points in the class. And that's a, a competition between the classes, so it kind of brings the classes together, and I give candy to the, uh, to the leading group whenever I can afford candy. So that's the leaderboard. I also have a grading scale. So the grading scale, I, I nabbed from Lee Sheldon. The idea is that instead of giving that lecture at the beginning of the year when you say you all have an A and then you'll fall precipitously throughout the semester losing points, I think that's a silly way to play a video game. You'd never do it that way. And so they all started at level one and they started with zero points. And so everything they do in the class gives them experience points. And so they build up their points throughout the game. And so whatever points they get at the end of the semester in this case is going to be their grade in the class. So you can see that you need 900 to move to the rank of slime mold and to get a D minus in the class. And so if we look at the leaderboard, the leader in the class right now is White Phoenix 1. And he or she has 651 points. And so you can, we're halfway through the semester, so you can kind of figure out. It's funny, Google thinks this is in Indonesian. My, uh, no, I don't want to translate that into Indonesian. Okay, so that's the way the class is set up. And so it's similar to a game in that you build up points throughout the game, and there's a leaderboard so you can see how you're doing against everyone else. There is levels that you pass. And so how have I answered this idea of making it leveled, well, the students work independently. And so if we go to where we are today, let's find, we took our unit three test before. So we're now in unit four on homeostasis. The levels are built around the new essential understandings from the AP biology um, curriculum. And so this would be level 24, 25, and 26 this is where most kids are this week. I found when I, when I started the game that some kids started to fall behind just because they're lazy. And so I would set checkpoints along the way. And so they have to reach a certain point, and that keeps everybody moving along. But they also can do lots of practice within that group, and some can race ahead. And so most of the people are kind of in this area this week. So this would be a typical level. Uh, level 24 is on positive and negative feedback loops. They'll, they'll click on the first thing in there, and it'll tell them what they need to read for this section. I'm finding that reading comprehension is a big deal. And so I started working the, writing this purpose so they know before they even start reading the units in the uh, textbook what they're looking for, what are the important things in there. They then have a special, I call it. So it's something that they have to achieve in each level. Uh, in this one, it is coming up with inventions that, that could improve our school that are based on feedback loops. Another one, this would be level 25 called heart rate. And so what they do for this one is they figure out how to take their pulse. 
They then sit quietly for two minutes, get their pulse, stand for a minute, do exercise. So they're gathering data. They're just doing this in class when they get there. And then they'll enter their data into a Google form. And then all of the data from the class gets compiled into one classroom set. And so sh let me show you what that looks like. So this would be the live results from that. I've hidden their names. Normally their names would be here, but I've hidden their names, the columns in there. So this would be their results. Uh, and this allows me to give them points for that. These are kids that have done it, but I haven't given them points yet uh, in Moodle for that. Yeah, I can then organize and find the average for the class. And then I can find a chart so we can actually talk about this in class. This would be sitting, this would be standing, this would be after exercise. So that's a, a really cool way to compile classroom data. Let me show you an example of why that's important. So we all do the osmosis lab in AP Biology and in years past they just turn in lab books and then we'd really never get to discuss it as a group and so now they just turn in their uh, lab data through a Google form. So all the data comes in like this. I can then click on the chart. So this chart is a summary of all of the data in the class. And so I'm getting these graphs that just are gorgeous. And it's because you're, you're taking 90 kids and all their data goes into one spreadsheet. So you can use averages of that, find that isotonic point. So that's pretty cool. I, I love that part of the game that they can uh, share data. They're also within each of these, let me find where I was again. So within each of these levels, uh, there's going to be a video and that video is going to, they'll just watch them on the iPads. I've loaded all the videos on there. But if they don't have that or they want to try to finish it at home, they can click on the button and it's going to bring them to my YouTube video of the, of the video so they can just watch it there. So they have to watch the video. Next thing I've done is there's a study guide for each of these. And so if you click on that, it's going to bring up what I think are the most important parts out of each of those units. So the big thing that they have to get out of that. I started with questions that were kind of tied around the essential understandings, but there's so much with mathematical modeling, things like that, that was somewhat confusing to them. And then finally, there's going to be a quiz. And so the quiz is a Moodle quiz. So when you click on that level quiz, it will allow you to attempt that. So if we could preview the quiz right now, saying that you only get four total attempts at it and it also times it as you go. So there are gonna be questions here. You can see there's a little clock. I built this into Moodle. And so let me just go fill in some questions. So let me fill in. None of these are probably gonna be right. So let me show you what it looks like. So the kids are doing this. They're taking this uh, in class and this is a mastery system. So let me fill these in. Again, I'm probably not gonna do well in this quiz since I'm just randomly filling in guesses. Then I'm gonna submit all and finish. It says, you sure you wanna do that? And I say, okay. And so I got a two out of 10 on that quiz. It shows me the ones that I got right. It doesn't show me what the right answers are. And so the students can go back and then take the quiz again. It's gonna randomize the questions and I'm starting to randomize so more questions get pulled into it. You can do that in Moodle. But what I tell the kids is that score that you get the first time on the quiz is pretty good indication of how you're gonna do on the unit test at the end. And so I want them to be in that seven something eight uh, range. If I show you how it's set up in Moodle, if you use Moodle at all, let me show you how one of these quizzes is set up. Let me find that one I just took. So the quiz is set up like this where it's got a time on it so they can only take 10 minutes, does some randomization of the questions, doesn't show them the answers. But down here at the bottom, it'll grade it for them. And so if they get somewhere between 99 and 100%, it's going to say, awesome, you are perfect. If you get 79 to 99, it's going to say you've, it's mastered it. And then if you get below that, it's try again. And the, originally I had it set up where they could take it an unlimited number of times. And I found some kids just game the system by just taking it until they just could rule out other possibilities. And now what I've done is had more of a conversation with them talking about, okay, if you didn't get an adequate score on the first time, you're going to have to go back, look at the material, and then take it again. And so if you get in higher than uh, 8 out of 10, then you get 8 out of 10 points for that. And so I have to move that data, but it's really easy to export it out of Moodle and then just move it over into my leaderboard. And then from there, I can move it into PowerSchool, which is our grading system. And so I give them points for everything. Um, the class is individualized. If you were to look at the class, we had some visitors today, some, some principals and teachers from other schools. 
and they're surprised this is a typical day. Yeah, I had kids um, just reading. I had kids who are working on problems. I had kids who are working on quizzes. I was helping some students. And so on a typical day, it just doesn't look like a normal classroom. It's actually more quiet than you might think it is uh, normally going to be. This week, we were doing something fun since we have iPads, we were making Screen Chomps, which is a really cool app on the iPad. So they had to make a little screencast, one to two minute, on, on one part of homeostasis. And so they, it records what you write on the screen in your voice, and then they could upload it. So a lot of the kids were spread out in the hallway making these little screencasts. They were nervous and excited about that. And so the class has been really, for me, it's so laid back because the kids um, are doing it. They're doing the work. Obviously, I struggled, like anybody who flips the classroom, I struggled with kids who just have a hard time learning independently and learning on their own. And the one thing I found is that reading comprehension is a big deal. Kids just aren't able to read a science textbook and make sense of the material. And I think I've been lecturing for so many years, and the reason I get good at lecturing and the reason the kids get good is that I'm really reading the book for them. So the thing I like about this class this year is that by forcing them to make move their way through the material, I'm teaching them to be independent learners. And so hopefully when they go to college and they take that first class, they can just open up the book and they can make sense of it on their own. I do do some lectures. I'll probably do maybe once or twice a week. I'll do a little 10-minute thing where it's a summary of what have we found, what are some questions that you might have. But generally, the kids are working through the material. And so that's a real introduction to my class. This is just the Moodle side, but that's not really what's going on in the classroom. What's going on in the classroom is you know, kids studying, kids learning. And it's probably been the best teaching that I've ever done. And so I hope that's helpful.